With me now is the Heritage Foundation's lead Homeland Security Analyst and former DHS Acting Deputy Chief of Staff, Laura Reese. Welcome, Laura. Thank you for having me. So three months before this murder, the MS-13 gang member was arrested by police in San Francisco for a vehicle violation. And a buddy in the car with him tried to discard a gun. And police recovered it and discovered that it was linked to a homicide case. Harris could have recommended that he be deported, but she didn't. Instead, she let him go. How often do preventable situations like this happen in which officers, police, they have a criminal alien in their possession and they're forced to let them go and then they go on to commit heinous acts such as murder in this case? Unfortunately, it it happens too often, and Ramos, in this case, was well known to the San Francisco police. He had several encounters with them. He had been arrested and convicted of serious crimes before, but not turned over to Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And the sad end of the story is that three innocent lives were taken, and that should not have occurred. This family should not be without their loved ones, because Ramos should not have been in the country. And when local officials are forced to refuse to work and cooperate with ICE or other federal immigration authorities, is that illegal? I know that the Trump administration has been pursuing that uh, legal challenges in court. Unfortunately, yes, it's too common. And the, the approach that the Trump administration is taking is to withhold federal funds. Uh, these state and local jurisdiction, ju- jurisdictions um, are not obligated to receive federal funds. And when they do, they have a responsibility to report uh, specific information to the federal government, including criminal information. And so when these jurisdictions refuse to cooperate with federal authorities, including ICE, they should not be receiving federal dollars for that refusal to cooperate. And today at the Heritage Foundation, you published a study comparing and contrasting the Biden-Harris ticket with the Trump administration in their approaches to these issues, such as immigration. Can you uh, lay out some of that thesis? Sure. The differences between uh, President Trump's administration and a Biden administration with respect to immigration would be stark. And just with respect to sanctuary jurisdictions and MS-13 gang members, the Trump administration has really gone after Uh, arresting MS-13 gang members, prosecuting them, and removing them. Unfortunately, if you look on the Biden uh, campaign page, there's no mention of sanctuary jurisdictions. There's no mention of MS-13. And this policy and practice would spread and escalate, which makes communities less safe. We also see Harris and Biden have... uh signified or signaled past support for this idea of granting amnesty, blanket and amnesty for the 11 to 22 million illegal aliens that we currently have within our borders. Does that concern you? Absolutely. When illegal immigration is rewarded with amnesty, it just causes further illegal immigration. Uh, People know that if they can just cross the border illegally and stay here and wait, that they too will get benefits like a green card. And this cycle will never end. There needs to be consequences for illegal immigration, and they should not be rewarded. And we hear all the time from the left that illegal aliens in this country commit less crimes than the average U.S. citizen. Is there any truth at all to those claims? Well, a report recently just came out from the Justice Department that a vast majority, high, high majority of those detainees in federal prisons are uh, illegal aliens. Uh, That is expensive. And if they were deported, American taxpayers would not have that expense and would be safer for it. And I know in your study you uh, hit on the wall a little bit. You you speak about the president's efforts to build the wall on the southern border. And I know there's a debate. Is the wall being built? Is it not? Can you speak to that either way? The wall is being built and it's being built quickly. Uh, It looks like the Trump administration will um, reach their target of 450 miles by January Um, In contrast to that, uh, Joe Biden has stated that if he were to become president, he would stop building the wall immediately, not another foot. And uh, that makes Americans less safe in terms of the drugs and the human trafficking that flows over that border. 
And I'm hearing new reports this week that uh, the coyotes in Central and South America, that they recruit a lot of people to come with them in these migrant caravans and to try and illegally cross our southern border by playing clips from the Democrat primary debates or playing clips from Democrat politicians talking about all the benefits here in the U.S. for illegal aliens. Do you think that kind of rhetoric puts some blood on the hands of Democrats? Because as we know, when a lot of these migrants come up uh, to our southern border, human trafficking occurs, rape occurs, people are left to die in deserts or to drown in rivers. Yes, we've been at this for a number of decades. I mean, ever you could go back to the 1986 law and, and amnesty, where when we provide green cards to illegal aliens, we've seen ever since that more illegal immigration has occurred. And these coyotes and smugglers are ruthless. As you said, they use the, this information to uh, attract their, their future clients, and they have no regard for their safety or their well-being. And um, bring them up to the U.S. solely for a buck. And then it was Democrats last year when they were making a big spectacle of going down to the border and inspecting the border, calling it a humanitarian crisis that the Trump administration was. They were even trying to equate these border facilities as concentration camps. However, in the past year, Democrats have stopped talking about it. Yes, it's and, and what is so um, disappointing and, and needless is the fact that these f people come up to this country illegally and then we, the taxpayer has to pay to detain them, to hear their cases. If they were simply stopped outside the border, um, and thank goodness Mexico and El Salvador and Guatemala are cooperating with this administration to help achieve that. Uh, but if they were stopped outside the border, then we would not have to face or deal with the situation of housing them, detaining them, and adjudicating their cases. And looking ahead to the future, assuming President Trump does win re-election, what else would you like to see his administration do in regards to illegal immigration? So he's talked about pursuing merit-based immigration, and that is based currently our immigration system is a majority based on family and chain migration and a minority based on employment uh, immigration. He has talked about flipping that ratio so that the U.S. selects more of its future immigrants based on skills and needs of, of our markets. Um, I, I believe that he would pursue that in the next administration. Um, also, there, he will have to um, continue to secure the border. Uh, given COVID-19 and the economic fallout in Mexico and Central American countries, uh, there's going to be some real uh, immigration push factors with their poor economies, uh, and there's going to be quite an incentive for them to migrate north to the U.S. to try and get jobs and, and send money back home. So continuing to secure the border, continuing to build, build the wall where it's needed is going to be imperative. Great analysis, Lauren. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you.